you are doing well. You are welcome to St. Francis Children's Church Service. Today we are going to learn about something beautiful. We are going to see the God who injures and binds. Why does he have to injure us? If he loves us, why does he have to do something like that? We are going to learn more in our lessons. But before we do that, we are going to have our praise and worship. We are going to pray before that, hands together. Eyes closed. Heavenly Father, King of Glory, we thank you for today. We thank you for this lovely morning. We thank you for the word that we are yet to receive. We pray that you open our hearts to receive it and give us the grace to do your will and to do as your word says. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. We are going to stand up and praise the Lord with us for him and we shout the praises for him. Are you ready? Yes. Our first song says in the name of Jesus. Jesus, we have the victory. Are you ready for the song? Yes. Let's yes, dance together. Are. All right. You're dancing like this. Demons will have to flee. Oh, in the name of 
another beautiful day and we bless him for he who disciplines us he does it with love for us to get better and for us to be the good children of God as we worship in this song remember that the Lord does all things for the good of those who love him Friends, 
that is what we are going to learn about. But before we do that, welcome to Sunday school this morning. Wow. Good morning and praise the Lord. Last Sunday, we talked about a man after God's own heart. And you know that person? David. And we talked about the wrath and love of God. This Sunday, we have another lesson. And it is about the God that injures and the God that binds. God that injures and God who binds. And our lesson is coming from the book of Job, chapter 1, chapter 2, and chapter 42, from verse 10 to verse 17. It's a long one, but it's very, very interesting. So before we do that, let us have a word of prayer, and then we go and enjoy our lesson. Hands together, eyes, eyes closed. closed. Dear Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for your word, and we pray that as you speak to us today, that we shall learn from your word and listen to you and we do what it tells us to do. In Jesus' name we have prayed and believed. Amen. Amen. So friends, our lesson today is coming from the book of Job, chapter 1 and chapter 2, and then we shall run to chapter 42. And I know these are very, very big verses and very many, but it is a very interesting lesson. You will open your Bibles with mommy and daddy and aunties, and then you'll be able to read this story. But we are going to get a small peek from our story. And we said our topic today says, the God that injures and binds. The word injures is a new word to some of us, and the word bind is a new word to some of us. So what is the meaning of the word injure? The word injure means to get hurt, to be in pain, to go through a lot of things that are very difficult. And those can be things like you have fallen down and then you break your leg, that is getting injured. Or you're going through a very difficult time, you haven't had anything to eat, that can also be injured. But then there is the other word that says bind. And the word binds means putting together. You put something back together. That means when you get injured, you can be put back together. You know when you go to hospital and then you've broken your leg and then they have, they have to put a cast on it. You know that white cement that we see on someone's hand? That is being binded. So it, it brings it together, it restores, and it heals. So like we said, our lesson comes from the book of Job. And you know what happened to Job? All right, open your ears, put your hands over here, and listen. Make sure your eyes are looking at me, and let us enjoy our lesson. So, Job was a man who was very, very, very rich. He was very, very rich, and he had the most beautiful daughters. He had the most handsome sons. Basically, he had all of it, but most importantly, He's a man who loved God so much. He was very righteous. He obeyed God. He was very faithful. He did whatever God told him to do. And he also refused to do what Satan wanted him to do. So one day, God is having a talk with Satan. And God is there boasting. He's like, my friend, have you seen my servant Job? And Satan is like, which one is that? It's like, yes, Job, my servant, he is the man who, is, who loves me, who is very righteous, who listens to me. Satan was like, no, that man loves you because you have given him everything he needs. You've given him the riches, you've given him the money, you've given him the sheep and the cattle. You've even given him a wife and ten children. And God's like, no, he doesn't love me because I've given him all that. He loves me because he respects me, he trusts me, and he's a righteous man. So Satan is like, you know what, God? Give me an opportunity. Give me a chance to go and test Job. And God's like, hmm, you want a chance? He's like, okay, let me give you a chance. But do whatever you have to do to Job, but do not kill him. So Satan is like, okay, so I can do whatever I want? Like, yes, do whatever you want. So he went, and you know what he did in just one day? 
Satan took everything Job loved. He took his wealth, he took his riches, he took his sheep and cattle. They all died. But the saddest part was all his ten children were all dead. And you know what that means? Have you ever lost a loved one? Have you ever lost someone you love so much and they tell you that person has died? Can you imagine the pain Job was going through? But you know what happened, friends? Job did not complain to God. Job did not quarrel at God. Why have you taken all this? Why have you done this? No, he didn't do that. And you know what he did? He blessed God for the things that he had done for him. Even through the pain, he still blessed God. So Satan rushed back to God and told him, Ah, I have taken away everything, but this man is not saying anything. And then God is like, yes, I told you he's a very righteous man. But then Satan is like, give me another chance to test him for the last time. And God is like, it's okay, go ahead. He went back and you know what he did to him? He gave him a sickness over his skin. You know that sickness that has scars and you have wounds. You know like chicken pox? Yes, and then you have wounds. But it was so itchy and it was so painful. And he could only use a rock to scratch himself. Do you know how much that is painful? But friends, Job did not co complain to God at any one minute. He just stayed praying to God and asking for God to listen to his prayers, to help him, to help him go through the situation. And then the saddest part was when his wife came to him and told him, why don't you deny God and die? And Job looked at his wife and says, I cannot deny my God. Later his friends came. His three friends came to him and told him, Job, we are sorry that you've lost your family. They moaned with him. They cried with him for seven days. But you know what happened? After the seven days, when Job tried to tell, him, tell them what he was going through, they told him that you had sinned against God, that Job had sinned against God. And that is why he was going through all that. Can you imagine his wife, his friends? Oh, dear. But you know what? Job still said, I will not complain to God because I know who my God is. I will not cry. I will not quarrel at God. I will not fight God. I will just wait upon God. And as he waited upon God, in chapter 10, God comes through for Job. And you know what he does? Because of the way his friends had treated him, God told him, Job, first Ask forgiveness for your friends. And Job got a calf and what and burnt an offering for his friends as a sign of forgiveness. And then the most amazing thing is that God restored Job's life. He got healed of the sickness and he got his riches back twice more than what he had. And he got other children, 10 of them seven sons and three daughters. Can you imagine? Isn't God amazing? He restored everything. He brought back everything. He binded everything back together for Job. But Job did all that because first of all, he respected God. Second of all, he was faithful. Even when he had questions to ask, he knew the God he served. So he gave God an opportunity to answer each and everything even before he asked. Wow, isn't that very nice? And you know that Job lived for over 140 years. Those are so many years, 140 years. So friends, that is a lesson from the Bible today. But what have you learned from it? Are you going to be a Job? Are you going to be his wife? Are you going to be his friends? First of all, what do we learn from our lesson today? The first thing we learn from our lesson today is that God has the authority. God has the power over Satan. God has power over everything. Remember, he's the creator. So he has power everything, over everything. Satan had to first ask permission from God to test Job. And it was God who gave him that permission. So that means Satan cannot do anything to you without God giving him that permission. And by the time he gives him that permission, he knows you and me will go through that test and we shall win and we shall become more 
than conquerors. Isn't our God very good that he thinks about us even before these things happen? So friends, whose power, whose authority are you going to stand in as we go through these injured times, as we go through the pain, as we go through the hunger? Whose authority are you going to stand in? And our second lesson is God's ways. Our lesson is God's ways are not our ways. That is our second principle that we get from our lesson. My ways are different from God's ways. Your mommy and daddy's ways are different from God's ways. That is why when we pray to God, he either has an answer for us, either it's a no, wait, or yes. Because his ways are different from our ways. But he always has a good plan for us. That is why we read in Jeremiah chapter 29 that God has a, the right plans for us and they are the plans to prosper us just as he prospered Job. So friends, it will be difficult during these times because our ways are very, very difficult and they are so confusing, especially the ones for God. Sometimes you ask yourself, what does God want? What does he want me to do? Where does he want me to stand? But you can only know that if you know who God is. And you know how we can know who God is? Through our, reading our Bibles, through praying, through listening to his voice, through the different things we see around us, the nature we look at because he created it. That is how we can know God. And then when we know God, we shall know his ways for us. So friends, what are those things you're going to do to know who God is? Are you going to pray? Are you going to fast? Are you going to cry to him? Are you going to listen to his still voice? Choose that one way that will help you know who God is so that you know his ways and not our own ways. Our third principle, the most interesting one, the one that I like is that the God gives and God takes. Like we said in our lesson today, when we look at Job, God had given him every single thing he wanted. But through the test, he took it away. Because he wanted to show, he wanted to show Job that he can give him and at the same time he can take it. But he can still give it to him back. And that is what he did. So does it mean that when you're going through the hardest of times, like the times we are in through the COVID, serious, the COVID period, and you know you have gone hungry, we are not going to school. Are you going to give up on God? No, friends, you cannot give up on God because you know who God is and you know that he is a God who gives and the God who takes. That is why our topic today says the God who injures and the God who binds. Because when he injures us, or when we get injured, he will bind us together. He will restore us. He will heal us. That is the God we serve. And what are you going to do as you wait upon God? Like I said, remember our question I asked earlier on in the beginning? That have you ever gone through something that was so bad? What did you do? What did you think? Like, what was your thought about it? What did you do? Did you cry? Did you fight? Did you pray to God? Did you wait? What did you do? So friends, as you wait upon God, what are some of the things you're going to do, you could do to wait upon God? Just as Job did. Are you going to fight? Are you going to disobey? Are you going to cry? Are you going to pray? Are you going to wait upon the Lord? What are those things, dear friends? So friends, isn't it amazing that we have such a lovely God who injures and binds, who gives and takes, who loves us so much, who has power over Satan. But you know, you cannot do that. You cannot have all those beautiful things if you do not have Jesus in your heart. So to win the tests that the devil will bring, you need to have Jesus in your heart. So friends, today, then I know there are some friends of mine there who are saying we want to win the devil. We want to have power over him. Yes, you're going to say this prayer after me and then you'll have Jesus in your heart. But remember, even you who has accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, 
you are supposed to avoid sin just like Job did. He kept being righteous. He did just not, he did not believe God and then he left it there. He stayed being righteous. So let us say this prayer after me. Dear Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for your word. And we thank you that you're the God who gives. You're the God who injures and you're the God who binds. We are sorry for the so many things we have committed against you. And we ask for forgiveness. Today, I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And in Jesus' name, we have prayed and believed. Amen. So friends, remember to read your Bible. Find a good church. Ask your mommies and daddies to help you walk this journey. And also the Holy Spirit will be with you. Wow. I hope you enjoyed your lesson today as I enjoyed it because I learned so much from it. But our memory verse today comes from the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 6. The book of Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 6. And this is what it says. Because the Lord corrects everyone he loves and punishes everyone he accepts as his child. It simply says that God loves us so much that if we do something against him, if we sin against him, he will punish us. But at the same time, because he loves us, he will forgive us and he will bring us back to him. So remember that every time you fall and sin, God loves you. If only you can ask for forgiveness and he will correct you and bring you back to the path of his ways. Okay, friends, let us have our closing activity. And it's very simple today. It's not a very difficult activity. However, I need you to know that as Christians, being injured and being tested is not going to stop now. We are going to go through these things. But we have to remember, we have one person who is there to stand with us. And you know who that person is? Yes, friends, that's the right, that's the right person. Jesus is the only person that can help us do that. That is why we are going to get this name Job and we make sure that it reminds us of what we should go through and who God is. So J is for Jesus and O is for our, and you know what B is for? B is for binder. So when you put it together, it says Jesus is our binder. Jesus, our binder. Repeat after me. Jesus our binder. So every time we go through the difficult of times, remember that Jesus is our binder. Okay, friends, it was nice having you today and listening to me. I hope you enjoyed the lesson and that God blessed you. We as Sunday school teachers love you so much and pray for you and we look forward to seeing you again. God bless you and have a lovely Sunday. Bye.